Hi there, I'm Marie from DIY Montreal and today I'm going to show you how I built and installed this wall mounted vanity. In my next video I'll also show you how I installed the faucet and how I did the plumbing for the drain pipe. Want to see how I built it? Let's get to it. Damn it. <laughs> Want to see how I built it? Let's get to it. <laughs> for this vanity build I chose to work with pre-finished laminated particle board in hopes that this would help the vanity hold up to water better. I've never worked with this material before, so this was a bit of a learning process. I started by squaring up one edge of the panel on the table saw, then ripped it down to width. I could then use my miter saw to cut four panels to rough length, slightly longer than the final dimensions I'll need. These will be the four sides of the vanity. I'm going to use PVC edge bending that matches the laminated panels in order to finish the edges. Unfortunately, this isn't the iron-on type edge banding and it's not pre-glued. Here I'm gathering all the tools I'll need for this step, and I've left links to all the products I use in the description box below, so be sure to check that out for more info. I did a few tests off-camera using various adhesives and found that the most user-friendly was Speed Tape, a really thin, super sticky, double-sided tape made for edge banding. So after cutting a strip of edge banding slightly long, you simply apply the Speed Tape and pull off the backer paper. Then carefully position the strip of edge banding and press firmly using a roller. The edge banding is always a bit wider than the panel, so the last step is to trim off the excess. This little tool makes the job so easy. Just squeeze and pull and it trims both sides at once. I'm going to be cutting the panels again so the ends don't need to be perfect, and so I just trim the ends using some scissors. I had totally forgotten, but I actually purchased a brand new blade specifically made for melamine. Laminated particle board is notorious for chip out and I wanted to do everything I could to make sure I got crisp, clean cuts. With the new blade in place, I set the blade angle to 45 degrees. Okay, so call me over cautious, but I really wanted to avoid chipping the edges, so I added some painter's tape to the edges before making the mitered cut. I cut one side of all the panels first, then adjusted my fence to the final dimension and cut the opposite sides. This way I knew each piece would be exactly the same size. Between the tape and the melamine blade, I got super clean cuts. With all four sides cut to length and labeled, it's time to add some biscuits. Particle board is too brittle to simply glue edge to edge, but adding biscuits will strengthen the joints and also help with alignment during glue up. I set the fence to 45 degrees on my biscuit joiner, and I did a few tests to get the alignment right. There's a little line on the side of the tool that shows you where the slot will be cut. You want to make sure that the line is close to the top of the panel, otherwise you'll cut right through your panel. As you can see, I had to add a thin piece of wood to raise up the tool enough. I lined up the panel and made marks where the boards would meet. I could then use these reference lines to position the biscuit joiner and cut the slots. I took my time making sure to fully seat the joiner against the boards and repeated the process to make three slots in each board end. I did a dry fit to make sure everything lined up and decided I should add a couple pieces to the back for extra rigidity. I used my biscuit joiner again, this time setting the back fence to zero, and using my workbench as a reference edge. To make the glue up a little less stressful, I started by gluing on the small pieces to the top and bottom panels. I let them dry before moving on to the main glue up. Here I'm using Titebond Melamine glue, but it's not necessary for this application, and I actually switched to Titebond 2 for the main glue up since it gives me an assembly time closer to 10 or 15 minutes, which I desperately needed to adjust all these clamps and get the joints aligned just right. I made sure to double check all the joints and check for square before letting it dry overnight. Alright, with the carcass assembled, I measured the opening and cut a door, leaving about an eighth of an inch gap at the side and at the top. Just like before, I applied edge banding to all four sides of the door. This time I paid more attention to getting the ends just perfect since they will be visible. I first trimmed the ends off and then used a file to shave off the excess and get it perfectly flush. Here's a little tip. If you have any glue residue left from the speed tape, you can use a dab of lacquer thinner to wipe it off. I'm going to use this Craig jig to install the door hinges. It actually has an integrated scale so it eliminates any need for measuring. And with the integrated guide stop, you never have to worry about drilling too deep. It's pretty awesome. 
The only issue I faced was that the two small screw holes from the hinge didn't seem to line up with the small holes on the jig, so I manually marked them with the help of my combination square. I could now pop in the door to mark where the hinges would be mounted. I used a stop to keep the door flush with the front of the cabinet so I could circle around and mark the pilot holes from the inside. You can't see in this shot, but make sure you put a spacer under the door to raise it up just a bit before making your holes. Okay, so after playing around with the hinges adjustment screws for a while, I got the door aligned just right. I then noticed that the door swung in too far, so I added an old IKEA push to open mechanism that I had on hand. The last step before installation is to mount the suspension hardware. I found these professional grade mounting brackets at a local plumbing supply store, and while I'm sure it's overkill for my tiny little vanity, I like to do things right. The idea is to drill four holes and tap in the bracket, but easier said than done, so I built a little jig to apply pressure in the right places as I tightened down two clamps to force them into the holes. Once both brackets were attached to the vanity, I could move it up into my powder room and position it into place. I temporarily put my sink into place to get the full picture and used a bunch of scrap wood to support the vanity exactly where I wanted it to go. Lastly, I made sure it was level and used shims to make any final adjustments. I'm happy to say that I finally thought of using my new laser level on a project. I set it up so the laser line would hit the top of the brackets, that way I could just line up the other part of the bracket on the wall right up to the laser line and mark the holes. After drilling the pilot holes, I could remove the vanity and mount the wall brackets. Now note that this wall has blocking behind it that I'm drilling into since I planned to have a floating vanity when I did the remodel. But if you can't drill into studs or blocking, you can just use wall anchors. All right, moment of truth. I can now put the vanity back into place and simply hook it to the wall. You can also use the two screws to adjust the vanity up or down and front to back if needed. I suddenly remembered that I wanted to add a shelf, so I went back to the shop and made the cut. I'm going to use this jig to install shelf pins roughly in the middle, and while I really wish I had done this before installing the vanity, I found a way to make it work. I used a couple scrap pieces of plywood as a spacer so I could rest the jig on them and use the top hole to make the pinhole. Then I pushed the blocks to the back and made another hole, and repeated the same process on the other side. As you can see, the drain pipe is in the way of my shelf, so I checked a few measurements, leaving a little extra to be safe, and went back to the shop to make the cutout. Now you could add some edge banding to the cutout, but I just left it alone. As you can see, the P-trap and drain have been connected, and I'll be showing you how to hook that up in my next video, so be sure to tune in for that. Now all that's left is to reinstall the door, and that's a wrap! Hey, I hope you liked this video, and if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, I'd love to have you, so be sure to hit that subscribe button. Until next time, thanks for watching, see you soon. The Walmart facet, faucet, damn it. The Walmart facet, the Walmart mount, the wall faucet. <laughs> All right.